I just finished my 6GT barrel work on this lathe, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm really excited about my 6GT build. I cannot wait to shoot this thing, and we're a step closer. In the last video, I went over the project goals. I talked about 6GT versus 6 Dasher, and we talked about all the components, parts, and pieces in this video. We're going to focus on barrel work, and I've done quite a few rifle, barrel, chambering, and muzzle threading videos, and it can be quite a long and complex story. So what I've decided is each time I do one of these barrel work stories, I'm going to go in-depth on one thing. This time, we're going to talk about sanding, polishing, and laser engraving the barrel in detail, but I'm going to cover the entire process start to finish as well. So. To review, for this build, we've got a BAT TR action. This is BAT's tactical action. We've done quite a few rifle builds with this action, and it's an in-house favorite. We've got a Krieger barrel blank. This is 5R, 28-inch finished length, and it's got one in seven and a half twist rate, which should be great for the 6GT. So, for tools, I'm using the Precision Matthews TL1660 Laid. This thing is big. It's got a 16 inch swing. It's 60 inches capacity between centers. This is my larger lathe. This is a three phase machine. I also have the PM1440 GT, which you'll see me use to sand down the barrel prior to polishing and engraving a little bit later in this video. We've got the true bore alignment system. This is an articulating chuck that does axial and radial alignment. It's clamping your barrel with a six jaw chuck, which gives you a lot of great versatility and a little bit more even support for those delicate areas. I've got the SSG range rod, which is optimized for use with the true bore alignment system. Really great pairing. That uses two bushings, one further inside the barrel, one out towards the end. It aligns an alignment rod that you can use with an indicator to use the axial and radial adjustments on the true bore alignment system to get your your barrel just dialed into absolute perfection. We've also got an Alpha Legacy Reamer. This is from Alpha Munitions. This is their 6GT Reamer with 170 thousandths of an inch freeboard. That was specified. Uh, talked to Tom Danielson about it and he said that's gonna work great with the selection of bullets that you plan to use. I've got a Dave Manson Go Gauge for 6GT, which I can also use as a no-go gauge when I apply a piece of tape to the back that gives you two thousandths extra length. So let's start out with the muzzle end work. This is my standard muzzle threading job. We start with the dial in, again using the SSG range rod and the true bore alignment system. Part off the end, this time it was about an inch that I part, parted off. Turning the tendon down to diameter, cutting the thread relief groove, Cutting the step down on the end, that'll help to align whatever muzzle device you're gonna thread on prior to it engaging the threads. Facing it to length, I cut it to about 610 thousandths of an inch from the shoulder, threading it, and then cutting the recess and the crown. So again, kind of my standard muzzle threading job. Then we move our attention to the breech end. Now I do the muzzle first now, because I use a barrel extension screwed onto the muzzle end so that I can support the barrel and I can blow compressed air through it from the other side. I have an outboard spider that secures the end of that barrel extension. This machine has a very long spindle, it's a very large and heavy duty machine. If I'm using my PM1440 GT, the barrel sticks out the other end, so it makes it a little bit easier to deal with uh, in that way. So I do a pre-dial of the barrel within say a half thousandth of an inch, uh, do any facing or parting that needs to be done then, then we do a pre-drill. We're gonna take our length down by 0.1 to 0.2 inches, base to shoulder, and then take the diameter of the shoulder area down by at least 30 thousandths of an inch and just bore out that, that bulk material where the chamber will go with a drill bit. Then I can get the nose of my indicator into the critical throat area section and ahead of that about an inch to do my final dial. Once the final dial is done, we can bore out that pre-drill area. Perfectly true, so when the reamer comes in later, it's gonna be riding on a surface that's perfectly concentric uh, with the lathe spindle. That way the reamer starts perfect, we're not gonna pick up chatter hopefully, and things will finish perfect. We turn the tendon down to diameter. 
we cut the thread relief, we cut the step down, kind of like on the muzzle end actually, and then we cut the counter bore. So this is sort of the, the first portion of the breech end work. Then continuing that work, uh, we've got thread transitions. I like to cut a ramp where the threads are going to start and where they're going to finish on either side at about 45 degrees. This gives a really nice transition into the threading and back out of the threading when the threading tool goes across. We do the threading. This is 1 and a 16th by 18 in this particular case. Uh, we cut the chamber, the bulk of it, with the chambering reamer. And this is, I'm going to get within, say, about 20 thousandths of an inch of where I need to be in terms of depth. I'm going to stick the go gauge in to get a visual reference Perfect. on our tenon chart diagram from Bat Machine. They're going to tell you how far the base of the go gauge is going to be relative to the end of the barrel tenon and so on and so forth. For the last 20 thousandths of an inch, I'll start to screw the action onto the threads and use a set of feeler gauges stacked together at first to get a rough idea of how far we've got to go. I'll apply my scotch tape to the back of the go gauge to give me two thousandths extra depth to account for the crush when we tighten the barrel and cut down incrementally. I'll usually have a couple thousandths, check again, and then see where I'm at, see where I need to go. In the end, my goal is with the go gauge plus that scotch tape on the back, I want to just see the ever so slight resistance when I'm closing the handle with that receiver screwed on. And that's exactly what I got this time, which is awesome. Uh, then I went in with my Teslong NTG 100P, cover that in just a second, and inspect the throat transition. Polish the chamber with some fine sandpaper and then cut the chamfers where the start of the chamber is, where the inside of the counterbore is, the outside of the barrel tenon, and where the shoulder is, so that we don't have any sharp edges. Okay, so that setup, the NTG100P from Teslong, very affordable bore scope, works with your phone, your tablet, or your PC. And I have this mounted on a, a tool holder, as you can see here, a CXA tool holder. I can run that in, I can spin the barrel to see if I've got any waver in my throat transitions, right, where they stop and in, in transition into the rifling. And in this case, just like whenever I dial a barrel in really, really well, I saw a nice clean straight line as I was spinning the barrel, so I know that I've got a perfectly aligned barrel and a perfectly centered throat transition. When the bullet goes into the rifling, it's be, going to be engraved symmetrically all of the way around and that should help it to fly more straight when it exits the barrel. So this is really all of the on lathe work. Now we're going to deep dive a little bit into some topics we haven't really explored on the channel and that's the finish work for the barrel. So this Krieger blank had some machining marks on it. Uh, the, the ridges from their final pass. So I chucked it up in the PM1440 GT. I've got a live center here on the tailstock, so that's going to spin on bearings so that we don't have any metal on metal movement while we're doing this. I also have what looks like a thread protector for the muzzle end made out of aluminum. Chuck that up in the spindle and you know we can spin the barrel at whatever RPM we want to here. So I started with some 80 grit paper and then moved up a little bit to get those ridges gone and then went over to the polisher and with this I used various grits and wheel types starting with 150 grit moving up to 400 and 500 and then finally kind of an ultra fine. So we've got a kind of near mirror polish on the barrel looks pretty nice and when we get to that point we're ready for the laser engraving. So big call out. I had a friend Alex from Laser Everything. I met him through his YouTube channel. I reached out to him. I said, hey, I need to get a laser engraver for, you know, some firearms marking tasks. And what should I buy? And how do I set this up? Alex has helped me from start to finish. I found him because his videos are awesome and, you know, kind of buyer's guide kind of stuff. Uh, but then he shared some optimized settings with me and, you know, helped me get the machine set up with, you know, the right features and options. So what I ended up with, was you're going to find a couple different types of power sources for these fiber lasers. What you want for this type of marking is a, a fiber laser. There's a Rakus, 
power source versus JPT power source. The JPT gives you a lot more flexibility with different frequencies and things like that. So if you need to do, uh, you know, PMAGs, plastic and metal and a whole bunch of different types of things, the JPT power source is kind of the way to go. 50 watts is a little bit more power than the 20 or 30 watt machines that are kind of entry level. So that's going to speed things up and give a little bit better uh, capability. I got a rotary axis so I can actually engrave, you know, you could do tumblers, engrave different things around the circumference of the rifle barrel, things like that. It uses EasyCAD software, which is uh, a way to basically program the machine to, to do what you want. You could import Illustrator files. And what I learned from Alex is that it's not just, you know, going around and doing text. It's basically anything that's even a letter, the letter A, for instance, has to be hatched. So the, the laser uh, marks that it makes are very, very thin and kind of delicate, uh, if you will. So you have to hatch it so that the hash marks are almost touching. And, and what I did for this was I had hatches going at, you know, basically 90 degrees to each other, perpendicular to each other, negative 45 and positive 45 degrees. So there's quite a few parameters to set up uh, on these machines. I decided to go with the 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter working area that concentrates the power a little bit more. I think it gives you, what is that, somewhere around six to eight inches square working area, which is plenty you know, for the barrel specs that we're gonna be engraving on a lot of these barrels. So here's the Amazon listing for that. It was about 6,200 dollars for uh, the engraving machine and it's worked really really well so far. So here's the EasyCAD 2 software the way that I had it set up we've got the chambering spec 6GT 1 and 7 and a half 28 inches overall length. I like to give all these stats so that if I'm working in my ballistic software or I'm selecting a bullet all I have to do is look at the side of of the barrel and see all of that information and then the manufacturer which is me ultimate reloader so we ended up going with 74 percent power uh, 1900 millimeters per second speed 25 kilohertz frequency and five marking passes to get it to the appropriate depth now i've done a test on a lathe i i did an, engra an engraving on a cylindrical object stainless steel same same stuff 416r and I turned it down until I could, I could just barely faintly see it. And I took a thousandth or eight thousandths, excuse me, off, off of each side. Sixteen thousandths off the diameter took me down to where I could barely read it. That means the engraving is eight thousandths of an inch deep. And that means we're way beyond the, I think it's three thousandths of an inch that the ATF requires for marking firearms, which pertains more to things like serial numbers. But just so you know, this machine can definitely handle it. So once we've got the settings, applied and we've got what we want to engrave input into the software we're going to align and support whatever part we're engraving i use a couple of v blocks here as you can see to support the barrel uh, we're going to focus the laser there's a, a sort of a line beam and a dot beam and what you do is you raise and lower the head until those are perfectly overlapping and where the dot is on the line Focus is super, super important. If it's not focused, it's not gonna mark. <laughs> and then we can do something called lighting the path. And it does kind of a pre-trace that you can see in real time. And that shows you where it's gonna land on, on your item. And you can use the, the reference mark, the same one we're using for the focusing there, to make sure that we've got the right angle so that the text will be level and not tilted. Then you go ahead and hit mark. That's gonna engrave the part. This process, I think, takes about two minutes or so, the way that I have this set up. So it really does not take a lot of time. Ventilation is a key concern, especially if you're uh, burning onto plastics or Cerakote or other powder coating, other types of coatings. You're gonna have poisonous gases filling your room. You definitely don't want that. So I've just now installed a, a really beefy uh, ventilation system in the shop. And then after you're done, just like what Alex shows on his channel, you can take some Zep on on a magic eraser and, and go over the part. It'll take off all the sort of burnt residue around it and it looks great. So that is the barrel work kind of from, from start to finish and uh, still a process that I'm fine tuning, different polishing compounds, different abrasives and, and different techniques to get things just where I want them to be. And this is important because at rifles.ultimatereloader.com, you'll see that we're building rifles and they're gonna look kind of a lot like this. So 
uh, we're getting geared up and we're getting ready for all that. Next, we're gonna cover installing this barrel to action in the MDT ACC chassis. We've got a zero tech tactical scope. We're gonna try out for the first time. Uh, we're gonna get it on paper and start the break-in process. This is gonna give us a, a first look at how our six GT ballistics are gonna compare and how our accuracy, for that matter, will compare to the six Dasher that I built using this same bat TR action right here. Uh, then it's gonna be time to do load development and uh, see how I like this. Maybe even put it on the recoil rig and compare the recoil between six Creed and six GT and six Dasher. That I think would be pretty interesting with everything else equivalent setup. Same weight, same rifle, same butt stock, uh, butt pad, and so on and so forth. So uh, let me know what you think, drop a comment. If you have specific feedback, uh, this time we kind of deep, deep dived on our polishing and engraving. If you have questions about that, let me know. Uh, go over to Laser Everything on YouTube and hit subscribe. Alex is a super cool guy. He's got uh, training, he's got his uh, engraving business, so he, he can offer a lot. And then you can learn a lot just from watching his YouTube videos as well. So that concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.